Hey everyone, my name is Jamie Houck and I am picking back up in regards to doing my end of the year, beginning of the year readings for the different horoscopes. Sorry, it's been so long to get out. Um, but this next sign that I'm going to do is Sagittarius. And um, just to let you know is that I'm going to be drawing three different cards from three different decks. I based it around what usually comes out in my readings is about lessons to learn that you should be focusing on and that. So I figured that's why it would be good to do end of the year, beginning of the year reading because this year is a nine year. So we are just about to end a nine year. So basically things, some things that maybe started nine years ago and lessons in that you really want to wrap them up, whether it be relationships or karma or different various aspects that you don't want to carry in to the following year, 2017, because that adds up to a one year. So it's going to be new beginnings, new lessons to learn. So um, the first deck, so I'm going to do one for 2016, one for 2017. So the first deck that I'm going to be using is from the Enchanted Map. I'm just asking what message do you have for Sagittarius for wrapping up 2016? What message? Stop. Okay. What message do you have for Sagittarius for beginning of 2017? It's going to be that one. That one wanted to come out. Okay. The next set is going to be the Energy Oracle. What energies should Sagittarius wrap up for 2017? What energies should Sagittarius wrap up for 2017? What energies will be getting for Sagittarius for 2017? Stop. Okay. This last deck is going to be from the Wisdom of the Golden Path note guidebook. It's a newer deck, so I haven't had a chance to connect with all the cards yet, so I may read from that book if I don't get initial impressions from it. So. Message do you have for Sagittarius for the year 2016? Stop. I haven't seen that one. Okay. So what final message? What final message do you have for Sagittarius going into 2017? Okay. Okay. So let me see what the cards say. All right. So the first card is sacred pool reversed door to value reversed and spontaneous and intuitive creation reversed. Now remember that this is stuff to wrap up for 2017. So I'm not too familiar with the sacred pool card, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the book. Um, okay, so what it says is it can be difficult to overcome denial when there is a reward for staying where you are. If you can't accept and love yourself, you remain trapped. Wearing a false mask of victimhood. The benefit of embracing denial in the victim's mask is that you never have to take a real risk. Dimming your light serves no one. Turning away from the truth that is reflected in the stillness of the sacred pool keeps you in denial. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Such vain efforts lead to tedious, boring existence. 
Take the risk and shine your beautiful light into the world. Look in the mirror and see the truth. Surrender the need to self-sabotage. Remember that you have a responsibility not just to yourself, but to the divine spark within you. Courage is not the absence of fear. Accept the discomfort of seeing with clear eyes and you'll soon find that wondrous adventures are waiting for you. Step into your magical life and take the leap of faith. So whatever stuck out to you from that message, that's what this is saying for to wrap up by for 2016, you know, is that really reflect back over the last nine years because was eight, nine, ten. So to about 2008. So think of maybe patterns and stuff in your life that have been going on since 2008 that keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating. You know, so what is something that you are denying to yourself? Um, a lot of the times we don't want to face the monsters within ourselves or to come to terms with certain aspects. Because um, like they said, having the mask on, looking through rosy glasses is sometimes safer for you. Or it's comfortable um, but you can't really fully experience your full potential until you go out there and take risks or let go of or stop that cycle whatever it may be so um, door to value reversed okay so what I'm getting after from this card is door to value is more about value for yourself because what stuck out to me was the part about how did they word it? I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Um, if you can't accept and love yourself, you remain trapped. Uh, wearing a false mask of victimhood. So door to value is really look at yourself and take stock and find value within yourself. Like what are you able to offer? What are you able to give yourself or within relationships, within a sibling relationship, romantic relationship, within friendships? You know, what do you, or to even the world, what do, what do you have to offer? Um, Because I, I get the feeling that maybe you've been getting down on yourself over, well, the last nine years then, off, off and on, maybe, you know, or it's a continued pattern. Now is the time to shut that door and really boost your self-esteem, so to speak. And take value in yourself. You're a valuable person. You have, you know, you have stuff to offer. Um, and because of that, though, is the reason why this card is upside down, which is spontaneous and intuitive creation. You know, um, it creates a block. When you keep telling yourself these negative thoughts or you have this negative self-talk to yourself, it creates a block for yourself um whether that's within well this is for creative act um intuitive creation or it blocks your intuition um i don't know if many of you are really feel connected to you know new age or readings or, or different type of things like that or um it could be even you know, maybe there's been some ability that you have that you just have a natural hack for, if that's the right word. If you, you know, something comes really easy to you and you didn't really have to learn it or practice it, you know, but maybe over the last nine years it's been kind of diminishing or it has its ups and downs. It's because of this block. It's because of the thoughts that you tell yourself. So really work on figuring out what pattern. Okay, so to wrap up for 2016. Figure out what pattern has been consistently repeating itself, especially over the last nine years. What is something that you keep doing or saying or keep putting, you know, what, like what are times when you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm finding myself in this situation again, or this always happens to me, or I always, I always get taken advantage of, or, or whatever it might be. Um, figure out what pattern it is. And if it's a negative one and you don't want to take it, well, being that it's upside down, I'm, it's more of a negative pattern. Um, so figure out which negative pattern you don't want to bring into 2017 because you need to acknowledge it and let it go and start to change those thoughts that you tell yourself. And when you do that, you can turn this card right side up again, which is spontaneous and intuitive creation. You know, you'll have that, mm, 
you know, that your, your jive back, so to speak, you know, you'll be able to, um, get into your, your natural talents. No problem. Okay. So for upcoming 2017, the first card is oops, movement. Okay. Um, so for 2017, um, this could be what this card usually means is two different things. Sorry, excuse me. I'm drinking my shake. Um, can be two different things. It can either mean movement of your body and, um, that might tie in with for the 2017 is maybe, um, feeling better about yourself by exercising or moving around a lot more, like physically moving your body, exercising, exercise. Yeah. Um, physically moving your body, exercising, or it can also mean, uh, that you're moving possibly, you know, that might be coming up or you might be just moving a lot and traveling. Like I see this little hot air balloon, you know, um, so you might be traveling a lot more. Uh, so that's what that card means is for, as far as your messages coming up. So be open to that, uh, whether it's X, you know, moving your body more or, physically moving somewhere else or taking trips. So the energy card that came up is storm warning. Okay. So, which is no way. <laughs> Look, okay. This, I, this is called threading. And I love this because, um, if you see this card says it's 28, eight plus two is 10 which equals one, year of one. And then this storm warning card is 10, which equals one. So I just think that's really cool how these cards do that sometimes. Um, anyways, back to storm warning. So, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna read off the book because I'm having a hard time pinning down exactly what this, what this card represents for you. Um, okay. This card indicates a potential difficulty either in the external world or within yourself and your emotional life. The difficulty is coming closer and you may have already heard rumblings of potential problems around you. The caution here is to be conscious yet not fearful. Consider what's going on and look at the situation with calm clarity. Investigate your options and honor yourself and your intentions. Stand up for yourself and take action on your own behalf. As with all difficulty, even the worst storm passes. Always remember you have the power and the wisdom to handle whatever may come your way. Which is interesting because the next card is the power card. So um, I'm still deciding on whether or not I want to read this deck always right side up or read it both. Um, but after reading that, it really comes to my mind in regards to power, this power card. Um, so it's just to kind of keep that in mind and to keep your clarity and to, when something comes up, calm yourself in the storm. I mean, you can almost even see it here. Sorry, with the glare, I don't know what to do with that. Um, but he's got like these leaves flying around him, like Pocahontas, like color of the wind type thing. So which, which reminds me of this storm. But yet he's calm and he's just playing his little flute, you know, but yet also he's he represents like power. And even he's got like these arrows in the back. So he's ready to fight if he needs to, but he's calm. So... Things may come up for 2017, especially in the beginning, where it might throw you off and you need to remain calm though and figure out what are your options, what are you going to do, and then when you do that, make sure that you, you approach that with a calm center instead of just reacting. Respond, don't react. And when I was reading for this card, the stuff from 2016 also kind of came up to my mind when I was reading it off in regards to um, the storm within yourself. Uh, you might have this card come up because maybe you don't fully resolve of 2016 or 
if this is some habit that's been re constantly repeating itself over the last nine years, you're not going to be able to break it within a couple weeks. It's going to take practice. It's going to take time. So again, watch your thoughts and don't defeat your, mentally defeat yourself. So be aware of that. Just remain calm. Calm your thoughts. Remain calm. So um, for wrap up for 2017 then is either move your body or you might be moving somewhere else or you might be taking lots of trips. Be aware of external rumblings, you know, chaos going outside of you or chaos within yourself. Within yourself, you can control. A lot of the times the external chaos you can't control, but you can control yourself, which is to remain calm within the storm. So, all right. Well, that is your 2016, 2017 beginning of the year and end of the year wrap up. Thank you. Bye.